again. We are back today to talk about what I'm going to do for my lesson plans for the sixth week of the school year. This will be the week of Labor Day, so I get a four-day week. Okay, so in math, um, two days this week will be math workstations, and you can see a whole separate video on what I'm doing for my math workstation activities, which only leaves time for two uh, larger tasks this week. My focus will be on the ticket sales, which you can see on the screen. It's just a lot of problem solving with addition and subtraction. And then we'll also work on um, snack time. We'll use um, actual real nutrition facts for popular theme park um, snacks. So while students are working on these, once again during workstation time and regular math workshop time, I will be meeting with students in small groups. The primary bulk of my small group instruction will be addition and subtraction this week because I do like to go through those two concepts quickly. If we have time, these are just some of the other activities we may do this week, but by the end of the week, I do hope to go ahead and move on. And if I have some students who aren't quite ready to move on, as long as it's just a handful, I'll just continue meeting with them in a small group as the rest of the class moves on because that's something we will review every day through our morning work and things like homework and just regular in-class review. So I do feel comfortable leaving this and moving on. Now one strategy that I love using for addition and subtraction is to have my students write a number line at the top of their paper. Now I don't do this with all students. This is just with students who really need extra help, especially those who do not know their addition and subtraction facts. And if you just make the number line go through 18 or 19, that's really as large as it needs to be. But they can use that number line, say they have to add 9 plus 7. Just to use that number line to add that is a game changer for some students. I also have it on their little desktop tag. So that's just a good intervention for some. So this is what we'll do this week for math. So in reading, we're going to continue talking about different types of questions. We're going to leave explicit questions and then go into implicit questions, such as author and me questions and all my own questions. We'll begin the week with one of my favorite picture books, The Lotus Seed. Absolutely love that. And that's what we're going to use to just introduce the idea of inferencing, where we combine what we already know plus what the text says. So we're going to do that. Um, if you want to do this little foldable for an interactive notebook, you can. Um, then we move into inferencing with pictures, which is where we have different pictures where we can students observe what they know. Well, they make observations on the picture, what they already know about these, you know, cats or baseball, and then they make inferences by combining those two things. And that's just always a fun way to get into inferencing is with the pictures. And then when we get a little bit more into it with text, we read the text type times, which is another absolutely wonderful text to read to students. There's lots that you can gain from that. And then we just are going to complete this graphic organizer together. I may use that with a book that we're reading in our independent reading groups as well. And then we'll also do some inferencing with informational books. This will be during or actually right at the end of my ecosystem unit, so I'll be reading One Tiny Turtle. We'll just make inferences based on what we read and what we know from that text as well, just to incorporate that nonfiction text. And then we will also end the week with doing just a little traditional inference practice where students have to determine, you know, what did they win, where are they going, based on clues where the author showed rather than told. And then you can see on my lesson plans that for science, I've just had a catch-up day for this week. We'll do a formal summative math assessment on Friday. But I just like to leave little buffers here and there because things happen and we get behind and I can't play catch-up ever. So every now and then, especially at the end of a science unit, I'll go ahead and put a little bit of a catch-up time and I thought a four-day week would be perfect. And then we can get moving forward. So science, and then if... I've never not had something to catch up on, but if there were to be extra time in the day, I would do use some fun STEM activities, but I've always had something I needed to catch up on. All right, so this is it. I will see you next week. Thanks.